Hello again everyone and welcome back to Programming and Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop and today we're going to be continuing our series on VBA or Visual Basic for Applications. Today's topic is going to be covering more about class objects, more specifically about the properties of those class objects and why we need to know about the private and public keywords as access modifiers to those properties. So let's go ahead and back out and go into our database here. And this is where we left off last, where we had our CLS customer class. And we've got our public variables that are declared, as well as our public method here called create. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I want to create a new class object that is based upon this table one contacts table. And I'm going to uh, create an ID field, a customer ID field, first name, last name, middle name, and an email address. So basically, I'm going to create something that imitates what would be in a table one contact uh, row here. So to do that, rather than go through the Create tab and then select Class Module, there is another way you can go and create a class module. And that's from within your VBA window here. You can right click on any of these folders and you can select insert and then class module and when I do that you'll see the class gets uh, a new class is created under the class modules folder and now I'm gonna go ahead and go up here and do option explicit in my declarations and now we're ready to get started with building our class now the first thing that I want to do is I want to declare some internal variables okay as a general rule what you want to do with your class objects is you want all of the values to be maintained internally. It, that is to say, within the class itself. And you only want to expose those properties specifically that you want to expose to either be a read or a write. So some properties you may want to have as read-only properties, where the person can't set the value, but they can get it. Okay. Or maybe you want them to do the exact opposite. Maybe you want them to be able to write a value, but not actually get that value. Okay. So the way that you can do that is you can use the access modifiers. And I'm going to do that with private p underscore id as an integer. Now what I'm doing here is you'll notice the naming convention is p underscore. And this is my personal naming convention. But what this tells me is that with the p underscore, that this is an internal variable and that no other outside uh, modules or classes are going to be able to see this, this specific uh, variable. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on private p underscore customer ID as integer. And the other thing you may have noticed is that I'm starting off my variable names with a, an actual character. Uh, this is something I haven't really gone over yet, but if you were to remove this, and let's just say we're going to use the underscore here, uh, this is something you can do in other coding languages, use the underscore or some sort of um, uh, symbol to start your, your variable names, but unfortunately in VBA it's going to give you an invalid character error. Um, it's the same also if you try to use a, num a number, it'll give you an error. In some, other in, a, in some other coding languages you can do certain things like that, but in VBA you can't, so I always start off with P underscore to indicate to me that this is a private internal variable. So private p underscore first name, we're just going to continue on here. Private p underscore middle name as string. Private p underscore last name as string. Private p underscore email as string. Okay, so we've got all of our internal private variables created here. Let's go ahead and save our class. I'm going to name it CLS contact. And notice that I'm not doing the plural version of it. I'm doing the singular version of it, CLS contact. Okay. It's a good idea. It's a generally a good rule of thumb to use the singular form of the value because understand this is a single object. And if you use the if you use the plural word like contacts, that can get a little confusing. Uh, you you know, you, you may want to use contacts to declare a collection of contact. You know, you, you want to store multiple different contacts within one particular variable, and you may want to name that variable contacts as plural. So as a general rule of thumb, you want to name your class objects with the singular form of the word. 
Okay, let's go ahead and save that again just to make sure. We'll go back into our form here and in our on load event here. Let's go ahead and comment out all this work that we did before. And let's go ahead and dim our new contact as a new contact. CLS contact. Okay, so we've got our new object called uh, new contact that's created here. And now we want to start setting some of the properties. So let's go new contact dot. Uh oh, where's our IntelliSense? Well, remember, since we set all of those variables on our class object, oops, let's go back here to this. Since we set all of them to private, they're not made publicly available. Other modules can't see them. So if I change this to public, you'll see that now, if I do this again and I hit the dot, the p underscore id variable is made publicly available. But this isn't really the functionality that I want for my class. As a matter of fact, I want my id value to be read only and not be allowed to set it, because right now I could do p underscore id, and then I could set it to a value of 1. But I don't want that. I want it to be a read-only value. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go back into my contact class, and I'm going to do a public property get, okay, get is a keyword here, and I'm going to name this public property id, and I also need to say its value type, which is integer. Okay, so now we've got a public property get id as integer. Okay, now what we do here is that when the person um, goes and tries to look at the id, we want to basically return back whatever the value is that's in the private id variable. So let's go ahead and change this back to private before I forget. And now it's pretty simple. Just like we did with, uh, with functions, we just simply return a value. We, we set this, the name of the property equal to a value. So we're going to do id equal to p underscore id. All right, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. That is how you declare a property. And when we do the get, keyword on our property it is this is going to basically just st strictly uh, be a read version of the property okay so now save that go back to my form and now when I hit the dot you'll see that ID is in fact the name of my property that is made available and I can go and get that value so I'm gonna go debug print Oops, uh, new contact, kind of fat fingered there. There we go. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and debug print new contact. Let's go ahead and save that. Now, we don't actually have a value in there yet. So what we need to do is we're going to go ahead and set a value for it. And the way you do that is um, let's go ahead and set it here. We're going to set p underscore id equal to 1. Okay, so now let's go ahead and run our table here. And we should see, if we look into our VBA code window here, that we had a response of 1. Okay, now I'll even set a little um, a little breakpoint there and let's watch how this works. Okay, so we have private sub, uh, the form is loading here. Step through, we've dimmed our new class called CLS contact. And let me clear this out just so we can see that debug print actually goes and looks into our class object here, our, our class um, that we have instantiated here, and looks at the ID function or ID method, sort of. It's the, actually the ID property, excuse me. And we're setting the value of p underscore id up here to 1. And then we're returning back to the id property the value that is stored in our private variable there. And that returns back as 1 to our debug window. Okay, 
I hope I didn't confuse anybody there. I kind of messed up along the way there, but I, I think you guys kind of understand how that goes. This is going to go into our class object here, our class, and, and get, you know, go through the property. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go ahead and set that value to 1 and then return it back as whatever the value is that we set there. All right, so that is what you can do with the get. But let's say that I want to also allow somebody to set a property. Well, if I want to allow them to also set the property, let's say I want to um, let them set the first name, for example. So we'll do public property, and then we use the keyword let. And then we give it the name again. Oops, this is going to be the first name. And then we have to do in parentheses, we want to allow the person, they're going to be setting a value to the property when we're doing the let. So we need to create some sort of way for them to pass their value that they want to give this class object. We have to give it some way, some way for them to pass that variable in or pass that value in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new variable called value as, and then we're going to do it as a string because the value that they're going to be passing in should be in the form of a string. And now, oops, I must have been, there we go, I must have been uh, <laughs> currently running. I was still in debug mode there. All right, so now we've got public property let first name is going to become the value that the user passes in. So we still need to actually do something here. Uh, it's not just going to automatically set the first name equal to the value. We actually have to do this uh, through some code here. We're going to say p underscore first name is equal to the value that the person passes in. Then we also probably want to allow that person to get the variable, to get the value from our first name. So let's go ahead and do public property get first name and then it is going to be as a type of string okay and what I goof up here public property there we go okay and then we need to do just like we did up here but this time we're gonna return back the value that somebody typed in so it's going to be first name equals P underscore first name so now Let's go ahead and save our class, go into our form, and let's go ahead and on our new contact, new contact, now we can see we have access to that first name, and now we can set the value equal to, say, Steve, okay? And then we can print out, again, first name. And let's just follow along here. We'll go ahead and debug this, and we'll, we'll step through the code and see how this all works. Okay, so we're form loads. We create our new object, and since we use the new keyword, we're instanti instantiating the object at the same time. We're going to go ahead and set for our new contact object. The first name is equal to Steve. And that takes us to the public property let first name. And you'll see the value, if I hover the cursor over here, the value is Steve, which is what I set the, uh, at what I put after the equal sign. And so value is Steve. And now I'm setting P underscore first name equal to the value that I passed in. That ends our property. And now the debug print is going to go and take a look at the first name. So now it's going to run the get on that first name property. And so we're getting the first name property, which is going to return back as a type of string. And we need to set first name, just like we do with a function. We need to set the, the property name equal to a value, which in this case is going to be the value that we stored previously when we did the let, which was Steve. And you can see if I hover the mouse over here, uh, it's Steve. Currently, if I, you know, first name is Steve, etc. So that means it's going to set first name equal to Steve and return back that now Steve is in fact the first name of the new contact object. All right, so there you have it. There is using the private and public keywords in order to work with your classes. This is a very, very important thing to do and we're gonna expand on this a little bit 
later on. Um, but the next topic we're going to talk about is uh, that little distinction that we were talking about when you instantiate an object. You need to do something which is to initialize your class. All right, so we're going to talk about that next.